Well, good evening again. I am very excited about today's lesson uh, because the Lord has been dealing with me all week long on who He is in us. I know from personal experience that people are, have been told what they're to do, their ministries, uh, they know exactly where they're supposed to be going. They see the corruption in the world today and they wonder, did I miss it? Did I make a mistake? Did I make a wrong turn? Because they still haven't seen it come to pass. But I'm telling you right now, if Jesus said it, it will come to pass. I first want to start out by, well, second, second, first, what I want to do is read something that I read this morning uh, or I read it yesterday because the Lord has been talking to me about the power, the glory, the light that shines in the people, His people. And that's what I want to portray to you today, the power that lies within you because He is the light, He is the life, He is the glory that is even in you as we speak and as we walk on this earth. I didn't need a confirmation because all week long he's been giving me scripture after scripture after scripture as I'm studying. But I want you to listen to this. Uh, that it's all, it, was, it says, only the light. This is in that little book uh, that I received from my grandson, Brandon. And it, it's uh, all, every day there's something in the Psalms that encourages you. And it just... It's amazing that every day it seems like that is exactly what I needed to hear or that is exactly what he'd been talking to me about. Listen to what it says. There is no such thing as darkness in you that is in Christ. The night in you is the brightness of the day. There is no difference between the two. Whew. During the summer months, the North Pole experiences 24 hours of daylight each day. Of, of daylight each day. Some countries in the northern hemispheres don't get dark until midnight or beyond. This is because of the relationship and the position of the sun, their source of light. You got that? Imagine God then who has nothing but light. Everywhere he goes, he brings light. He doesn't see or experience darkness as you and I do. It's a mind-blowing thought, isn't it? Yes, amen. And even more interesting, if you think about the met this metaphorically, God is not bothered, put off, or uh, disoriented in the dark because he simply doesn't experience it as darkness. Now just wrap your head around that. Wrap your head around that. He is the eternal light that is in every single person. And that light and that life and that glory brings the power of the Trinity within each one of us called his children. But I want to give you, I want to read this one, uh, a time that I was in dismay. And I didn't know which way to go. It was just like, you know, one of those times we all go through, we're human. I mean, even Elijah went through it. You know, here he, he's up there. He's, uh, you know, uh, crucifying these uh, um, false prophets and, uh, you know, making fun of them and all this kind of stuff. And then, boom, out of nowhere, this one woman comes after him and he runs. So everybody experiences, experiences these times of weakness. The Lord said, when you're weak, I am strong. But you can do all things through me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this is what I was feeling this day. It says, Jesus, as we talk today, may I be directed your way. As I listen to what you have to say, I'm asking you today how to pray. I know that you know my thoughts in my heart. I can't help but ask, when do we start? From the time I rise till I go to bed, I want to obey all that you've said. Your words are yes, amen, and true. I want to be useful to you. It is times like these when I am weak before you, I pray and seek your face I seek. I'm not here to rest. I'm here to do my best. Forgive me if I don't speak. I want the Holy Spirit 
to talk when I am weak. The waiting sometimes is hard. Sometimes I let down my guard. Forgive me, Lord. Help me to be strong in the midst of waiting to sing the victory song. Jesus is in charge, there is no doubt, for he alone carries all of heaven's clout. When my heart is turn, torn, you lead me through the storm, landing in the victory side where your joy and peace abide, where anxiety is released and I stop and roll up my sleeves. I was praying, I was crying that morning, just crocodile tears. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I was just crying and weeping, saying, Lord, where are you? We've waited for so long to see what you have promised come to pass in our lives. And while I'm praying this, and all this anxiety is in me, all these words come forth. These words, this came forth during that time when I was so down. And then because of his resurrection power, I said to my, I said, I am ready for battle again, and I've only touched your hem. You are amazing with, is more than I can say. You are the light in my every day. You are my rock, the place I run to when I don't know what to do. You are the light, always shadows disappear. And you let me know that you're always near. Seeing through the clouds above, you wrap me in your tenderness and love. He don't criticize me. He just wraps me up in his tenderness and love. My heart yearns to know when you're going to start the show. And then he says to me, I understand your feelings today. Your blessings are on the way. The principalities of the air are very much aware of the blessings coming to you when I drop the other shoe. Now that may sound funny and sometimes I'll, you'll hear that throughout when I'm doing a, uh, one of these rhymes that the Lord and I have, but it's just something he says to, to let me know when it's finished, when it comes to your time, when I open the door, that he'll drop the other shoe. That surprised me one day, but God has a sense of humor. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that in. Patience is a virtue while you wait for your breakthrough. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Remember, I always win. So pick yourself up and I will fill your cup. For you, my table is spread with my wine and my bread. My table is spread for all those that I have wed. Be at peace. My plans for you will increase hour by hour and day by day in my time and in my way. Do not be dismayed. Listen to all I say. All the things I've said to you are about to come true. So every time I get down, he just knows how to lift me up. And he says, I want you to tell my people today the power, the light, the glory that lives inside of them is me, is me. Praise God forevermore. The power and the authority abides in us through God's only begotten Son. Praise be unto God. And this, this plan was ordained from the foundation of the world. And I know, you know, as you know uh, about the sin in the garden, he knew all about that. He knew what was going to happen before it ever happened. He knows where you are before you even understand where you are. Praise his holy name. God, the Holy Spirit and the Son of God all now don't just walk beside you or now they're in a crisis, but they are in you. They are in you. Whew. Hallelujah. All that power and all that authority is in you. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. Oh, listen to this scripture. All things have been delivered to me. This is Jesus talking to us and encourage. All things have been delivered to me of my Father. And no one knows the Son except my Father. And no one, and nor does anyone know the Father except through me and the ones that I reveal it to. And that is those who want to know. Whosoever wants to know. 
God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, dominion, and might. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that age to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head of his church, in which you and I are a part. Well, you and I are a part of that church, and he is all for the, the body is completed in him, for he is all in all. Praise be. This is just an interlude to my beginning. This is just things that just keep crap keep coming up. I tried to write notes and tried to write notes all week, and nothing came together until the last minute, which is the way it always seems to happen with me. But I want you to go to Psalms 24 with me. Psalm 24 is so amazing. The earth is the Lord's. I don't care what you see out there. I don't care what people you hear out there. The earth belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord and the world and all that dwell therein. Who he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. And I don't know about you, but every time I read that, I would think to myself, what does that mean exactly? To me, in the natural, what does that mean? So, I stopped and I looked up a few few words in just three or four of them. I wanted to know what founded means. I wanted to know what established meant. I wanted to know what seas meant and waters or floods meant in the Hebrew. So, I looked them up. Uh, founded in the Hebrew means to settle, to take, to cancel, to instruct, to ordain, to lay foundation. The sea. The seas, as he, he founded upon the seas, means a roar, a breakthrough, a noisy surface. In other words, he didn't come. Ooh, it was just like the day of Pentecost. He didn't come in just, just slow and slothful. He came in like a rushing mighty wind, like a rushing surf comes to the comes to the ocean, ocean uh, comes in on the ocean waves. Praise God! I get excited. Uh, establish means to erect, to stand firm, to fix, to f to frame, to ordain in perfect order. And then we come to the the words water or floods. It means the same things. A stream, an ever running stream. <laughs> Sounds to me like that's what the Lord said when He said they'll flow out of you rivers of living water, and it'll never stop. Praise God. So let's say it this way. Let's listen to it. Say it this way. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And the world and all that dwell therein. For he has settled it, constructed it, framed it, ordained it, laid its foundation, created it. It came in with a roar. <laughs> he just had to say, let there be light. But it came in just pushing back everything else. And it, it, it separated the land from the water. And, and, and he erected it and he confirmed it and he ordered it into perfection. And it has a rivers running freely, flowing, always flowing from the four rivers. Hallelujah. This is how the earth was formed in its, first, in its foundations. Now... I know that this is my belief, this is what I see, this is what I see when I read the Word, but think about it and go study for yourself. Now let's continue with the rest of Psalms 24. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul to be defiled by idols, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings of the Lord, and the righteousness of of the God of his salvation. Now that's not all of 24, but that's as far as I'm gonna go. It is so amazing. People look around and they say, we're doomed, we're, we're you know, the, who, can, who can stop the downfall of America? Let me tell you what. People, we are blessed to be living in such a time as this. This is a time in history that no one else has ever seen. The Lord says that things will change according to the way he says, but it, it, it 
it's always been, but it's going to be showing in a different way. It's just like our music. Our music from every generation to generation changes. The way our fashions change from generation to generation. The way we talk changes from generation to generation. Even the way you preach and teach changes because God is turning things around His way and His, his it, it, just in His way. Uh, so look up and be encouraged because we possess this Jesus that I'm talking about. That power and that glory that is in him is in us. And we're going we're gonna to go back. We're going to go back. You know, I, I kept thinking about these scriptures, and I know I said this is a prelude, and it is a prelude to, to what I'm, I would really want to get into, hopefully, that I can get it said to you. You know, I prayed just before I came on. I said, Lord, please take this mouth, take this mouth and this hand and the, these ears, and let me hear and let me speak the words just exactly like you want them. Anyway, listen to this scripture. He says, uh, God ordained this time. This is why we should be so excited. This time to make known to the Gentiles, that's us that are not born into in, in, as a Jew, uh, the Gentiles, the glorious riches of the, of the mystery that is in Christ, the Christ in you, the hope of glory. In the Old Testament, they didn't have this mystery revealed to them. But we have it revealed to us today through the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Word of God. Now, who lives in us? Genesis 1 and 1, a little bit more prelude. Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And verse 2 says, and the earth was void and without form and darkness filled the earth. Now, I'm just throwing this in because this is on my heart. I don't know about you, but I can't believe that my God would form anything or not form something that is void and full of darkness and is cold and, and, and corrupt. No, that is not the God I serve. The God I serve creates beauty in every direction. Go back to Revelation, read what heaven looks like. <laughs> this is just a touch of what heaven looks like. This is just a touch. And so to believe that that he made this earth to start with to be void and dull? No, I don't think so. What I truly believe is there was probably eons of time that went between verses 1 and 2. And God is just letting us put it together a little bit to let Him us know the power, the power that we possess through his son, Jesus Christ. Now that's just my opinion, but I feel like one day the Holy Spirit just lifted himself over the earth and God looked back at the Holy Spirit and he says, it's time, isn't it? Yeah, it's time to reverse the curse on this earth. And so God said, let there be light. And there was light and he saw it was good. All the darkness ran away. Remember what he said? He says he d in, in that uh, that I read in Psalms, he doesn't even know what darkness is because when he walks into the room, his brightness does away with every, even the shadows. They don't even dare to stay. Praise be unto God. And now listen to this. So that's just my opinion, but I believe there was a lot of time that went between there. You know, Lucifer was thrown out of heaven, and I believe he hit earth. And when he hit earth, earth went void. Earth went dark. Earth became without form, without purpose. And then God said, it's time to reverse that curse. <laughs> that's Dee's opinion. Anyway, and there again, my daughter tells me, you forget to tell them who you are. I am Dee Knup, and this is May the 23rd, 2022, that I am doing a le this particular lesson on who it is that lives in you. Now listen to this. This is two, a little bit of my paraphrasing and a little bit of um, my what I feel in my heart because of the God I serve and the light that is in him and the life that is in him. In uh, Genesis 1.26, it said, Let us, which means Jesus is there, the Holy Spirit is there with God the Father, let us make man in our image. Plain as day, the words us, our, uh, and and when it says, and they made him made man in their image, they're all capitalized. They're all capitalized, meaning the Trinity was there. Now, 
This is what I'm saying. I don't know which way God did that when he brought man up from the dust of the earth, but I want to believe that he laid himself out on the foundations of the earth, laid himself out, stretched himself out, and when he came back up, the ground came up with him in the form of him. And the Holy Spirit breathed life into him and made man a living soul. Isn't that beautiful? Now, he might have, you know, done his little fingers here and there and said, you know, this is the head, this is the arms, this is the body, so and so. And it lifted itself up at his command. But I like to think he just laid down and formed him just like he he wanted just like he was and he was covered with the glory and glory can be translated every time I speak it as into light the light of Christ the glory of Christ he was in the image of the Father and the Son and he was covered with their glory praise be unto God hallelujah to the Lamb and another thought I had was I don't know how much time passed between the time he created Adam and he created Eve. Could have been years. It could have been just a day. I don't really know. All I know is God looked around one day and he saw there was nothing. Come on, people. There was nothing he had created that matched Adam. So he put him to sleep, took a rib and made Eve. But before that happened, have you ever thought, if God come down, you know, it does, it, I didn't see in scripture anywhere where it says he came down and he walked in the cool of the day, except after they had sinned looking for Adam and Eve. But I can't help but believe that he, if he created Adam, he probably came down very often. And Adam and him walked through that beautiful garden that he had created and gave Adam dominion over. Adam had dominion over it. And when Eve came, they both had dominion over the whole thing. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the animals, he said, you name them. And then whatever it's named, that will be what it is. They had dominion over this earth. And with one bite of forbidden fruit, they lost that dominion. But Christ, <laughs> whoo, but Christ, with one drop of his blood, reversed that curse. Thank you, Jesus. That was not even there. What I want to say right now is I believe God came down in the cool of the day and he walked with Adam. Now, my question to you is just, just thinking, just, just thinking as a, as a Christian and one who loves God, um, and I know you do too, uh, what do you think Adam saw? He was covered with the glory of God. God came down and they're talking and they're walking through the garden. What do you think Adam saw? Do you think God allowed him to see in the universes he had created? Or did he only get to see what was in the garden? I like to believe with the glory of God being all over him that he was able to see not only in the three dimension, but in the four dimension, in the fifth dimension, and any other dimensions that are out there because God created them all. He created time and space and dimension. And that brings up another thing I just want to throw out at you. People that have lost a limb, I heard this in my class and, and about the dominions. Let, let, me, let me just get back and roll back just a minute there. When I was in Bible school, one of the teachers came in, actually he was a substitute, and he came in that day and he, and he began to talk about the dimensions scientifically. How we as human beings normally see in only three dimensions. And, uh, but there are dimensions out there, and there are some that have seen in fourth dimension, and I've heard others have spoken to people that have been in fifth dimension. I don't know what dimension God's reign is, but I do know there's more dimensions. And as he spoke, he was telling me, he was telling us about the molecules. He says, you think you see this chair? He said, but it's molecules and atoms mixed in with air. And because you see in three dimension, you think that's a chair, or this is a table, or this is a piece of paper, or this is a book. Because that's what the dimension that you see it in. But let me go back to when God stretched his arm, Jesus stretched his arm out, oh God, and he laid down on the ground and he, when he came up, the form of the ground came up with him in the form of Adam. And Adam had both arms, both all ten fingers and ten toes. 
Now, I have heard this throughout my life, people that have lost a limb, a finger, a foot, an arm, a leg, uh, whatever, and even an ear. What, what, and, and that brings me to the garden when that, uh, Peter cut off the ear of the, of the uh, high priest uh, guard and uh, Jesus put it back on. Now, some believe he reached down on the ground and put it back on. I don't know. But let me tell you this. We see in only three dimension, but wherever God is, that arm is still there. Because I've heard people say, I still feel it. I still feel it. I still feel it like it's there. So it is there. And if we could stretch our faith out far enough, we could see that arm grow back out. We could see that finger grow back out. We could see that ear come back on because it's still there, but in another dimension where we can't see it. I don't know if you understand that or not, but it's things that have been rolling around in my mind for a long time, especially ever since I went to school and I heard that because I never was good in science, but it made all the sense in the world. If time is sped up, it's sped up, sped up, sped up, that might be where the angels are. And we can't see them unless they, unless they speed down. Anyway, let me get off of that. It's just something I thought of because I've been in school and I heard about the molecules and I heard about uh, how we see the, the different dimensions of time. Oh my goodness, God is so big and he's so, he's so magnificent, omnipotent. He knows everything. He sees everything. He's everywhere and always has been. Wow. Wow. Boy, I tell you, my notes are just uh, scattered here <laughs> because, wow, I'm not following them, that's for sure. Oh, this is another thing. I want y'all to get a grasp on who this Jesus is, that he now lives in us now. Listen to this. This I put in there because Moses asked God if he could see his glory. And God said, I will make all my goodness, my joy, and my gladness pass by you. But he says, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord. And then he says, here is a place beside me. And you shall stand in the rock, and it shall be, while my glory passes by, I will put my hand over your face so that you cannot see at that time, and I will release my hand, and you will see my backside as I walk away. Because you can't see my face and live. So, um, listen to what I said. This is what I want you to hear. God said to, to uh, Moses, I have here is a place by me. Now, the difference between the by me and the New Testament is Christ is not by us. He is in us. That, whew, that glory is in us. Holy, holy, as though God walked by, his glory shone. He's covered, uh, he, his hand covered uh, Moses so he couldn't see him until he was walking away because of the glory was so powerful but in the New Testament Jesus shed his blood he cleansed the earth with that first drop reversed that curse but he now not walks only beside us he is in us he says in John the 14th chapter he said I am in do you not know I am in my father my father is in me and I am in you we have this power I'm going to stop right here and tell you there's this friend of my son that is gone is is been attacked by uh, cancer she had cancer of the tongue and I haven't been able to talk to her to know how this happened or why it happened but my guess would be the chemo burst had an effect on her colon and it burst she was in the hospital for eight days and I and then she gets out and she tells me I just got back from the ER again this morning I got another letter from her. I'm praying diligently for this lady. And I got another note saying, I've just gone back to the ER. And I begin to fervently pray for this woman. This is a child of God. This is not somebody who believes. This is somebody filled with his spirit. Who has no, the devil has no right to attack her body. Has no right whatsoever. He's trespassing. 
But God said, write to her and tell her this. She has more power in her little finger than all of hell put together. So I did just that. And we have that same power in us. Glory be to God. In the beginning, listen, was the Word. And the Word, who would, in capital letters, who was the Word? The Word was Christ. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. It says all things were created by Him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him is life. And he, and the life in him is the light. Uh, the life in him is the light in men. He is the life in us. He is the light in us. He is the glory that is in us, the power that is in us, the authority that is in us. It's all His. The glory, the righteousness, the power, the anointing, the, 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 the uh, authority of His name is in us. We don't have to back down for anything or anybody. It is in us. The beauty of the power and the authority in us goes beyond. When we now, now there's something we have to do. We have to allow Him. We have to allow Him to be more than just a Savior, which is the one most wonderful gift of all, our salvation. But we have to allow Him to become Lord of our life, which means He takes over every aspect of our life. The Lord said, Trust in me with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding that's in the natural, but trust me with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding and in all ways acknowledge me and I will direct your path. When we live for Christ, every step we take is ordained, blessed, and anointed. And anointed. Don't you ever let the devil think that he's got an upper hand on you. <laughs> There's more power in your little finger than all of heaven, hell put together. Praise be unto God. God. Jesus was always trying to get his disciples to see the power in him was in them. For he gave them the power to heal the sick, cast out demons, and, and, and even raise the dead. He gave them that power when he sent them out. But he, they didn't seem to grasp it. They were still thinking in the natural. Oh, God, I know this is getting long, but I, I hope I, I let, let, let me just continue. Okay. First of all, we're going to go to uh, um, where Jesus was talking in John 14. He says, um, he says, um, I've gone to place a to prayer place for you that where I am, you may be also. And, and, and Thomas looks up and he says, Lord, how do we know where you are or how to get there? And Jesus said, I've been so long with you. I am the way, Thomas. I am the truth. And I am the life. And then right behind that, Philip gets up and he says, Lord, if you show us the Father, we'll be sufficed. And the Lord turns to Philip and he says, have I been so long with you? And you do not know that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father? Because it is not me that does the work. The things that I do, the things that I say, is not in my own authority. It is rather God living in me that is doing the work. I'm trying to tell you. And then there was another situation. We'll go to the book of John, the 11th chapter, where Martha, uh, you know, uh, Lazarus had passed away. And when Jesus showed up four days later, Martha says, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus, I'm paraphrasing, he says, Martha, I, he's not dead, he's just sleeping. And she says, oh, I know he's going to live again on that resurrection day. And he said, Martha, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Oh, it's almost like you can see him shaking them. Can't you see? Can't you see? I am the glory of God that walks with you. I am Emmanuel, God with you hallelujah in in the form of 
in the in the human form. Praise be unto God forevermore. And then, even in the Old Testament, Isaiah had a vision. He said, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord on his throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And there were above the throne seraphims, each having six wings. With two they hid their face, with two they hid their feet, and with two they flew. And they said one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His glory fills the earth. Now I'm asking you, how does the glory of God fill the earth today? Jesus is back there sitting at the right hand of God the Father interceding for us. He's done the supreme sacrifice that God accepted. That's where he is. So where's the glory going to go all over the world today? It's in you and it's in me as we carry it to the nations. But he doesn't send us out without preparing us because he said as they saw him leave and go back to the Father he said go and tarry in Jerusalem till you have received the promise of the Father for truly John baptized with water but you will be baptized in the Holy Ghost not many days from now and when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you you will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth and he said, go in Matthew and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. The age of the Gentile, the age that the secret, the mystery of the Christ in us comes. That's the mystery that has been given to this Gentile age, the age that we're living in. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Praise be unto God. <laughs> oh, oh, where did you go? No, 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 where did you go? I don't know what happened, but anyway, I hope this all comes together. Praise be unto God. So, in Matthew, again, he says, you are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its flavor, if you get discouraged and depressed and down and, and, and you can't smile at people and let them see the glory of God running through you, you're no good to me. But he says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light that is all set on a hill. You don't put it under a bushel, but you set it up on a hill so everybody can see the light, the Christ, the glory, the power, the, uh, the anointing, the authority in the name of Jesus that abides in you, in you. He is life. He is the light in every man, woman, boy, and child. He is the resurrection, resurrection power. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise be unto God. He is the perfecting in us. For we are changed. We are made new. All things are passed away and all things become new. And there is therefore now no condemnation in those who serve Christ. For we're all born into sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. But now, when you receive Christ, there is now therefore no condemnation in those who serve Christ. Praise God forevermore. For we are changed into a new creature. We are changed into the likeness of him. As he laid on that earth and Adam was formed, to me he just came up and was formed in the, in the, the earth came up in the form of, of the Lord. <laughs> and he breathed life into him and made him a living soul. That same Christ lives in us today. That same Christ lives in us. Another thing, do you by any chance believe in time travel? Oh, well, people say, no. I, I, ever since I've been a teenager, I've liked to watch uh, uh, Star Trek. I like Star Trek. Star Trek is the future. It's time travel. Uh, so many movies out of Hollywood come in to try, or tell you about time travel. Believe in time travel. And you say, this is, this, this, you know, we don't believe. We think it's just a movie. Excuse me. I believe they got their first thoughts from the Word of God. 
because I know and I believe in time travel. <laughs> I certainly do. Yes, sir. Remember the, the uh, uh, Mount of Transfiguration where Moses and Elijah came and they talked with Jesus and the disciples, when they saw Jesus, they saw his glory because he shone from his face, shone his clothes, shone in such a bright white they'd never seen before. And they saw Moses and they saw Elijah and they weren't just there by chance, those particular two. They were there to say, yes, Lord. They were there to encourage him in a time when he was going to be feeling a lot of pain and a lot of stress. You are here to fulfill the law and the pro and the prophets and you have done it all. Now, I believe they probably even talked about the crucifixion and all the beating and everything that he was gonna go through. And they were encouraging him. Now, that's just my thought in there. But that's time travel, folks. That's time travel. <laughs> there is nothing our God cannot do. We just have to release our faith Release our faith to believe in this God who created space, time, dominions, uh, uh, everything. He just created it all. And you say, well, let me see if I can get back on track here. I, I, I don't even know where all my notes are because I have. But <laughs> oh, here's another one. We are, when we receive Christ, we are no longer human beings. We are spiritual beings living in a human body, a vessel of clay. Now you say, oh, I don't know if I believe all that. Well, you don't, let me just give you one scripture, one scripture. And Jesus prayed to his father in John 17. He says, I don't wish that you take them out of the world, but that you would give them the grace to overcome, the glory to overcome the evil one. Because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. So to me, you would say, well, you're changed and you're reformed and you're transformed, but you're still human. No. I may be human. I use this human body to talk, to breathe, to eat, to sleep, to walk, to, to minister, to do whatever. But this is a spiritual being now. I carry the DNA of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in my body. I carry his glory. I carry his passion and his love and his joy and his peace. Praise be unto God. Now, you just may not believe all that, but... I do, I do, because scripture bears it out. Scripture bears it out. I think I've covered everything that I was going to say. Whew, 42 minutes. Lord, I got to march on. I got to march on. I do want to read this. <clears throat> they went, God told them to go back to the upper room and they would be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. He equips you before He sends you out. So listen, just to these few verses, listen to what He said to, to the disciples. On that day, on that glorious day in that upper room, on the day, day of Pentecost when it was fully come, how were they? They were in one accord. One accord is very important, that unity in one place. And suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound like a, from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. It reminded me how God came in when he created and he moved back the waters and he moved the land and he put the sky and the, and the heavens up. And he just moved it all around. That rushing surf, coming into the surf. This is a rushing mighty wind. Came in the sound from heaven. And it filled the whole house where they were. And there appeared unto them tongues of fire. As it appeared on each one. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men from every nation. I'm going to paraphrase this. Of every nation. And they begin to question because they could hear them speaking in their language. And they said, are not these all Galileans? How we hear them speaking in our language the wonderful works of God. Some mocked and wanted to say, well, they've been drunk. they're drunk on wine and, and they're just babbling but Peter and the leaven stood up and said, no, this is not, but it's not but the third hour of the day, but this is that, that the prophet Joel promised that upon, said, upon my 
people, I will pull my spirit. How does it say it exactly? This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it came to pass in the last days that God will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will dream dreams and see vision. Your man savings and your women save They will all, if they all, whosoever wants him, I will pour out my spirit. To not only walk beside him, which, which a comforter means to walk beside, but that comforter is now inside, inside. For he says, I'm not just with you in, 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 I think it's Ephesians, but I am in you. Oh, people, if we could understand the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it abides within us today, in us, in us, the glory of the Lord. I want to end with this other um, words that the Lord and I spoke together. After you realize the resurrection power and the glory of the Lord abides in you. Thank you, Lord, for washing away my sins and making me whole within. I know it's the blood my father sees and not my faults and frailties. I just want to love you, Lord, and to soak in the Holy Ghost more and more. Lord, may I have a new revelation from thee because you're, one who, you're the one who opens the doors. You turn the key. And then he says, I tell you those on the solid rock will stand, for I hold them in the palm of my hand. Not one will be lost, for all I paid the cost. For all have one goal, boys and girls, young or old. I cover the earth as I do the sea. More of my glory you are going to see. You will go from coast to coast preaching in the power of the Holy Ghost. Get ready for a great move as you step into my shoes. Whoo! Oh, glory be to God. You see... I know your heart's desire is to be set on fire, to have the boldness of the lion, but the gentleness of the lamb, as you show the people who the, is the great I am. This earth is mine. I created all space, dimensions, and time. With me you will wine and dine, for it is not for you to know the dates and the times. Time and space are in my hand. Do I have to explain this to man? Lord, I cannot conceive how you're going to complete everything you have said to me. Your thoughts are so much higher than mine, and I know all will be fulfilled in your timeline. And then he says, I hold the world in my hand. How can you explain that? How can I lead you and guard your back? How can you explain that? I am the God of yesteryear. I never change. All the worlds I have framed. I flung the stars in space and I named them one by one. I created the moon and the sun. The blood of my son covers everyone. How do you explain that? I can do all things and that's a fact. And then he says, relax. Let each day flow. I'll tell you when to stop and when to go. The earth is mine in the fullness thereof. It is ruled by the heavens above. Fear not, the sun is about to, to rise. He is about to rise, release, revealing the enemy's disguise. Breaking down the walls, seeing aisles fall, souls set free as they learn of me. Learn in me to rest, he says, for I guide each step. You won't have to guess, you won't have to fret, for your path in me is set. Isn't that just like our Lord to encourage us in the midst of storms? Oh my God, people, bow a knee if you don't know him and accept him as your savior today. Release your spirit unto him and let him set you free. 
in Jesus' name, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world would be saved. Just call out to him today and he will set you free. That is my prayer for thee. God bless you all. And I pray you felt that Christ that I tried to release to you today. God bless you all. Amen and amen.